afternoon. My name is Ethan, Ethan Hutchins. I'm the public information officer for the Broken Arrow Police Department. Uh, we have Chief Brandon Berryhill with the Broken Arrow Police Department and Chief Jeremy Moore with the Broken Arrow Fire Department. They will answer a few questions um, following a brief statement. So um, I will turn it over to uh, Chief Brandon Berryhill. Thank you for coming today. Throughout last night and this morning, we've had a tremendous amount of public outpour support from our citizens, surrounding agencies, uh, and other first responders. This is an extremely difficult time for our city and our departments. We pray that healing will follow this, and as we move this investigation, it will continue to be a difficult time. The Broken Air 911 Center received a call concerning a structure fire at 4.05 p.m. yesterday at 425 South Hickory. Fire crews and officers arrived within minutes. The home and one family residing, two adults and six children. I want to make it clear, the residents in the area, there is no danger to the public because of this incident. The situation is being investigated as a homicide. Many details are preliminary due to the nature of the fire that engulfed the home. I'm proud of our staff that took the number one call, responded to the scene, and remain at this moment continuing the difficult task of piecing together the moments of last night. We have six juvenile victims, ranging in ages from 1 to 13 years old. We have two adult suspects deceased being investigated as a murder or suicide. Detectives have recovered firearms from inside the home. We are still in the process of ensuring all the next of kin has been notified. Teams from the Oklahoma State Medical Examiner's Office and the ATF responded to assist in the investigation. Due to the extensive nature of the fire, specific causes of death will be determined by the medical examiner's office. This is an ongoing investigation. Updates will be given as details are confirmed. We want to make it clear that if the public itself has issues, the Mental Health Association of Oklahoma is available and the number is on the press release packet. First off, I want to echo Chief Barry Hill's comments and say thank you to the local community and really nationwide for the outpouring of prayers and uh, concerns and support that we've already had uh, to arrive on scene yesterday and see the looks on our, our first responders, my firefighters' faces, just absolutely broke my heart. And so we appreciate the prayers uh, from all of our communities. We want to keep the families as well as our first responders and the entire community in our prayers. And thank you so much uh, for that great outpouring. Uh, as Chief Barry Hill said, at approximately 4.05 yesterday afternoon, the Broken Arrow Fire Department, our crews responded to a residential structure fire. Upon our crews' arrivals, we did find a single family home, and at that home we had smoke and fire showing from the rear of the structure. Our crews began an aggressive interior fire suppression effort as well as search and rescue efforts, and immediately we found two adults in the front of the house with significant injuries, uh, and they were obviously deceased. Those injuries did appear to our fire crews at that time immediately to be criminal in nature, and so we immediately called for the police department to come and intervene on the fire scene. Our crews continued into the structure and performed simultaneous fire uh, suppression efforts as well as search and rescue efforts looking for any additional victims in the home. The crews did an absolutely excellent job in confining the fire to one room in the rear of the house uh, in the room of origin. During the extinguishment of that bedroom, the crews did find additional victims as described by Chief Barry Hill. Due to the extreme heat and fire in that first, in that one bedroom, the fire room, those victims were not removed from the house at that time. It did become obvious that to all the fire personnel on scene that this was a crime scene, and so once the initial fire was knocked down, our crews moved to preserve the evidence, to preserve the crime scene uh, for our fire investigators as well as our police department. Our deputy fire marshals were on scene only moments after our first arriving crews, and they began to quickly coordinate their efforts with the police department, and our fire investigation quickly became secondary to the police criminal investigation. At this time, we do not believe that any of the victims died from the fire. However, the final determination for the cause of death will be made by the medical examiner. Our fire investigation, much like the police department's criminal investigation, is going to be ongoing for some time. We have coordinated our efforts with the ATF, who brought in their experts as well, and we've got evidence sent to their labs for further investigation. 
I would be remiss if I didn't mention, uh, not only uh, are we proud of our first responders who all operated on scene, but we also ha had help from our surrounding communities who came and operated here in the city of Broken Arrow running our other calls that were occurring at this time so that we could focus all of our efforts on this tragic emergency scene. Again, we do appreciate the continued support and prayers for the families, the victims of this, as well as our first responders and the entire community. Again, I want to point out that we will take a few questions from Chief Berryhill and Chief Moore, but we also have some press packets with a press release that we will pass out following this press conference. So uh, at this time, we will take, again, just a few questions from uh, Chief Berryhill and Chief Moore. Uh, I know you said victims range two, not victims one to 13. Uh, can we get specific ages on that and genders? That'll be in the press packet, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then also, second question, um, we're not going to release the, uh, at this time the actual ages just from 1 to 13 for now. Okay. Did you say that all the victims were contained to that one room where the fire was? Yeah, the victims, uh, the juvenile victims were in one room in the back of the house where the, where the main fire was. That's correct. We found two adults at the front of the house. All of the juvenile ch children victims were in one bedroom in the back of the house where the uh, majority of the fire was contained. Chief, I wanted to ask you, the, you immediately found two adults in the front of the house with significant injuries. Can you clarify, were they suffering from gunshot wounds or blunt force trauma? Can you tell us anything about your injuries? I can tell you we recovered firearms from the home. Uh, we're still investigating exactly what happened. Uh, and until the medical examiner comes back and gives us specific uh, findings, we're not prepared to release that at this time. What makes you think that it was two, that they were both suspects? Uh, the nature of where they were found um, and where the juveniles were found, um, that's our initial investigation leads us to believe that at this time. One final question for Chief Berryhill. I was wondering if there's a history of domestic violence at this house or any previous calls to this address? It's been numerous years since we've had a call there, nothing very, uh, uh, it's pretty innocuous and nothing out of the ordering for this particular residence. Any questions for Chief Moore? Can you just talk about, do you know anything about how that fire started? If it, they lit the house on fire or the background of the match lighting it? At this time, it's going to be under investigation. Our, our, fire crew, our fire investigators have been on scene investigating that, coordinating closely with the ATF, collecting evidence. We won't have a, a determination until the conclusion of the investigation, and we send that evidence to the lab and, and, and look it over closely. Chief Moore, how do you Sure. Uh, no one should have to face this kind of tragedy, and our firefighters do face this from time to time. And so we have definitely learned some strong lessons in this community about facing tragedies such as this. Uh, we've been very, very proactive in setting up peer support teams, um, also retaining both the police chief and I have both retained outside counseling services from a local counseling agency that we offer to our firefighters as well as their families. And we were very proactive last night. We pulled those firefighters off the trucks. We met with them. We met with our chaplain team, as well as the peer support team, had all of them come in last night and begin addressing really the mental wellness of our first responders, because we know these can have traumatic effects on individuals uh, throughout their life. And it can be a cumulative effect, too. But this is a once in a lifetime tragedy. And we are very proactive, both the police chief and I, in making sure that our personnel uh, are, are being well taken care of. Chief, One real quick. Um, it was our understanding that when you guys arrived that neighbors had already started to pull bodies out of the house. Can you comment on that? Uh, the, the reports are a little bit inconclusive at this time, but we did find them at the very front of the house. And from what I understand, there were some citizens that were involved in, in that, but I don't have the final details on who or what or where. Last question. Are you? Uh, I, we noticed there were a couple of crews from Oklahoma Natural Gas out there today. Is that just part of the typical response to the fire, or is there any reason to believe that if there's any gas issues out there? It is standard practice to have Oklahoma natural gas come out to every structure fire, uh, turn off the gas as well as uh, investigate. That's part of their own policy and protocol that they investigate to make sure that's not any cause. We do know the gas was not on at the house at the time of the fire. Okay, at this time, guys, that's all the questions we're going to take today. Again, I, I do want you to stick, if you can, to our social media. We will post future updates on this investigation, and I would invite you to take home a press packet that does have the newest press release that we have 
to hand out. So thank you so much for joining us today and, and being here, and, and um, we'll have those updates for you very soon.